oftentimes I will send to you a, uh, a file or a zip file. In this case, I'm sending to you a Q3D.zip file. Uh, what I'd like to do is I want to put this in a Q3D uh, directory. I will also often send updates that will go to this directory and you'll be able to monitor uh, other Q3D uh, controllers on the network. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to right mouse click and tell it to extract all. And it, this little wizard comes up. Click on next. Now it's going to want to extract it to the desktop which is not what I want. So I'm going to just swipe back through here and delete this part of it and there should be only ba one backslash. So you want to end up with C colon backslash Q3D. Okay? And then just click on next and it'll say show extracted files. That'll be fine. Show it. So these are the files that are in there. Now one of them is auto update which uh, will update your firmware and this one is IP setup. For right now I'll just click on IP setup and if it comes up with this just click on unblock and here are the two uh, net burners that are my controller Q3D controllers. This is my engraver number one and engraver number two. Now your IP address will probably be different. I typically send out it uh, most standard ones I send out are 192.168.1.165. So you should see yours there. And then you can go into advanced and see what some of the settings are. Typically, you won't need to do this. But what you will do is if I send you an update, let's say there's an issue, you will go to auto update uh, and click on find. And of course, there's my two net burners that are running in my shop. I will say, let's say I want to update number two. I will browse for the file, which is usually in the Q3D directory. And here's the latest one, uh, 06 16 12. You'll open that up, click on reboot, and click on update, and that will update that computer. Now, I don't want to send it there because it's out in my shop, uh, and I don't even know if the machine is, is running. And if it is, it'll uh, cause issues. But anyways, if it were just sitting idle, I could update the firmware, which I'm sure it's already got the latest on there anyways. Okay, easy enough.